one's a nice young bull. And uh, I found out too that the, the girls, mostly girls who were jumping rope, that they uh, had different songs of, of the variations. If you lived in Fordham, you didn't have the same poem as to say a girl in, in Longwood or Hunts Point or something. And uh, you'd be amazed at the response I got on that. Uh, all people remember an old chance they had from when they were girls and then they got to about steady enders. And uh, I found out nobody knew what a steady ender was. Uh, it was usually somebody who wasn't very good at it or somebody's brother, like my father said, he had four, uh, he had four sisters. So he ended up as a steady ender many a time, and by that time he knew all the songs too. So uh, then there's fellows who want to know about trolley cars, and, and sometimes, I don't mean I know everything, but I know people who know a lot about trolleys, or they know or something else. So uh, anything I don't know, I can always call on them to, to feel them. So what happened then, um, about uh, hmm, three or four years ago, uh, they asked me why I don't write a book about all these, uh, look, I know people who save the articles, they come out once a week, and uh, they said, do you want to put them in a book? I said, well, it's really up to Mr. Doyle, it's his property, and uh, uh, I asked him one day, and he says, yeah, go ahead. Uh, <laughs> nothing official, nothing legal or binding or anything, and uh, so I told Mr. Hamlin about it, and uh, he says, all right, he says, uh, uh, pick out of about 200 of your best. Well, when you say 200, I had 1,800 by that time. Uh, it's just like asking the mother, who, uh, who's your favorite baby? You know? So uh, that was the hardest thing, was to pick out and winnow out uh, one out of 20, as I should say. And I tried to get them from every, every neighborhood. Uh, and the only way I could do that was to pick take the uh, planning board, uh, uh, there's 15 in the Bronx, and so that meant everybody was represented. And I took a few from Indian times, pre-colonial, uh, revolutionary, and so on. And uh, I came up with this book. This is a, uh, about 175 articles uh, from everything, right from the lowest part of the Bronx, right up to Co-op City, City Island, and so on. And of course I know that and no matter if you would, wherever you come from, you, you read it, you'll always say, well, why didn't you put this in it? Or why didn't you put that? But you can't do that. Uh, it just isn't big enough. So uh, this came out in, uh, uh, oh, just about two months ago. And uh, it's going very nicely. And uh, we sell them over in the uh, historical society. And uh, you can get them through the mail. Now this one, uh, I forget how many they had. But uh, the man who made them up, he was a, he was a publisher, and he said, uh, well, these books don't sell. He says, uh, I'm in this business like, ooh, 50 years. They make that thing, he makes up, he does these atlases and directories, always for New York State. So he's fairly, he says, uh, you don't hang, these don't hang around about 20, 20 years at least. Well, the first one went out and it was gone by uh, third year. This we have only about, 50 left out of, uh, I've forgotten the number, a couple of thousand. So it always amazes me because I always think that, oh, it's just old people like history. But a lot of young people buy it and for the families. And then you've got to remember, we've got as many ex side living in, in Florida and California. So every once in a while you'll get a whole batch, somebody comes back with one or gets mailed to them on Mother's Day or Father's Day or something. Then they get a whole flurry of, of inquiries about the book again. So that gave us enough courage to start a third edition, which we, just tonight, about four o'clock, I got the last entry in. And uh, it meant a lot of digging, and uh, you got to find out uh, uh, some of these people are very obscure, and so you want to know how come they got a place named after them and so on. And uh, then you have to go to the, uh, call up uh, the various councilman uh, and uh, then your secretary tells you it's, it's in there it's a little a, a law a local law and they'll tell you when it was uh, when it was uh, uh, made into made official but then you'll say well, well, well why was it made official what did they do they'll say search me 
And then you're going to find out what they did. And well, so as I said, they were all deserving, uh, deserving of it, I suppose. But uh, they're not uh, what, uh, uh, household names, I should say. And uh, then there's, now, uh, very recently we, we had this one where uh, Kelly, you, you've heard of Kelly Street over near Hunts Point. Uh, they, they had a very bad section. It was all old run-down houses and everything. And they finally tore them down, and they cleared it off, and they made a park out of it. It's around, um, I am the St. John section. Well, it's quite a Hispanic neighborhood now, and uh, but they're not all Puerto Rican. They're Central Americans, South Americans, and they all wanted to name the park after somebody who was uh, famous in their country. And it got to be quite, quite a, a bad situation. They were quite fi fighting about it. Well, I suggested Cervantes. I said, well, Cervantes is known all over the world, and he's a, he's he's right from Spain, so they all should look up to him for that. Well, they couldn't even agree on that, so they finally did the most obvious thing. They called it Kelly Street Park. <laughs> so, the next, so the next time, uh, uh, it'll, next time this book comes out in the uh, state court, you'll, you'll see Kelly Street Park, isn't it? Yeah. I didn't hear that. Oh, this is called McNamara's Old Bronx. This one. This is a, a this is very, it's a very immodest uh, uh, title. I wanted to call it Guide to the Old Bronx, but they seem to think that was a better one. This is called His, History and Asphalt, and that says uh, uh, the origin of Bronx Street and place names. And as I said, they're both available. You can get them right at the library if you want. Oh, and then later on, if you'd like, there are these booklets here. Uh, I, I, they'll give you a list of everything. We have books on. Uh, Oh, there's a couple of wonderful, uh, what they call coffee table books. Uh, the Beautiful Vines, and that goes from about 1920 to 1925. And, uh, and then they have 1890 to 1925. And they show you all the movies, the old paradise. And what strikes you at all these photographs is how empty everything looked. Uh, it seems like we, have, we must have twice as many people in the Vines as we had then. It just seems that way. And uh, you recognize everything if you're an old timer. And we have uh, we have books that we have a, a book on Norwalk, one on theaters, the Bronx. Uh, oh, I didn't even think of. Uh, one man stopped me, stopped me one day. He asked me why I never wrote anything about the brothels of the Bronx. <laughs> and I didn't want to say we don't have them, but I said, gee, I never occurred to me, and I wouldn't know where they are anyway. <laughs> So, uh, is, there any, uh, is there anything you'd like to uh, talk about? Uh, oh, oh, these, these, uh, these are a $30 book. They're, they're expensive. But they're, they're like, uh, these are expensive because, well, they're a lifetime book. You pass them on from a generation. There's maps, photographs, and everything on them. This is a half. This is 50. And this is what they call a soft cover book. Actually, it's this type. And uh, if you want to know anything about all five departments, uh, oh, there's, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, life saving stations. Um, John, John, can you tell us about Babe Ruth, the story? About Babe Ruth? Yeah, your story. Oh, <laughs> well, that, that's a, uh, uh, well, I mean, there's, there's everything in this. Well, I, I had a little, uh, I, I wrote a little anecdote about myself at the time. I went down to uh, uh, Yankee Stadium and I was standing outside with all the other hero worshippers, little kids, and uh, I was telling my son and daughter about it, and uh, I said, I was standing there one day when the players came out and there was a loadster right down the side of the, uh, the street, and Babe Ruth came out and he had a raccoon coat on. Well, you know what a raccoon coat is and you imagine how big Ruth was it looked like a bear coming along and uh, he walked right over and uh, he tried to get in a car but of course he was too bulky and I was standing there and uh, he uh, turned around and he took his coat off and he says here kid hold this and uh, oh here I was I was holding Babe Ruth's coat and I stood there and he got into the car and then he just